show you my guy? Yeah, yeah, I've got him. He's not going to stay long, mate. He just had a quick run. Yeah, quick, take him when you can, buddy. Righto, so we've got ourselves a nice young meat animal here for uh, field dressing, ready to go. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to cut his throat up here above his Adam's apple. So if you get a good handful of there, you can feel his Adam's apple. We always want to make sure you cut above that. Okay. Righto. Look, there's many ways to do this, but this is how I do it. Adam's apple. Cut through there like that. You've still got hold of the Adam's apple there. Just pull it out a bit to expose it. Just gonna run the knife down there, down the side of it, like so. Want to get to about the brisket there. Sort of pull it up, back up to the uh, Adam's apple, just separate that out like so. The reason that I'm doing this is to stop any of the um, freshly chewed food um, coming back up the esophagus and spoiling the meat and contaminating it as we pull it back through. Cable tie, simple as that. As you, can, as you can hear, he's starting to bloat up now. That's the gases in their stomach and the undigested food. So you want to make sure you lock that off. Right, and you just pull that back down like so, and we just pop it over here like this, stop it getting covered in grass and everything else, then we go down and start at the rear end. Okay, so now we're about to start around the bum. Uh, I've swapped knives, gone to a more pointed, smaller knife. This is going to help us cut around the anus. Um, that way we can pull it out and use a cable tie like we did up the front, and put around the voice box, tighten it off, Cut it all out, pull it through, doesn't spoil your meat. Very important. You don't want to get any of this sort of stuff inside your, your chest cavity or your carcass cavity. Righto. I like to put a little cut up the top here. Like so. You can put your finger in and pull it out a little bit like that. So we just cut right around the anus, putting a little bit of pressure, not too much. Be careful when you cut them back towards yourself, obviously. So again, another cable tight. Pull it up nice and tight. Just checking inside to make sure we're separated. Which we are. Then just push that back inside the anal cavity there. That way it'll stay out of the grass again. Won't get contaminated for when we do cut the stomach now. So now we're going to cut the pizzle off and then we're going to gut the animal. So grab the front of his pizzle. Just gently work your way down. Until you get around the testicles. Then when you can get hold of both testicles and the pizzle, just snap them off. Righto, so the next step is we're going to gut the animal. Now you've got to be a bit careful, he's been sitting here for a little while now, they start blowing up very quickly, they start getting bloated, so there's quite a bit of pressure there. So you've got to be very, very careful when you make your first cut to get between the membrane of the stomach and the gut, okay? So we don't want to go in too deep, otherwise that could explode. Pop that up there out the road. Little cut like that. You should be able to get your finger in underneath it, which we can now. You can see the gut there. Haven't cut any of that. So now we can run a knife up the inside like that. That way we don't spoil the meat. Gradually, a little bit at a time. Take your time when you're doing this, especially if the animal has been sitting here for a little while, because like I said, you've got a lot of pressure building up inside. I mean, there's various gut hooks and all sorts of things out there these days, but. You just take your time, you'll find you'll be right. You can see how much pressure's on that now. Using the other finger, you can use that to hold it away. 
Another thing to use is a drop point knife, okay? So instead of a clip point, a clip point comes up high, which means as you're trying to run along, it digs in. The drop point should stop us from digging into the gut cavity. Just keep, take your time, there's no rush. Again, using your finger. We're up to the bottom of the brisket now. Okay, it's entirely up to you if you want to split from the brisket up. Splitting from the brisket up, what that helps do is to cool the animal down a lot quicker. So if you're in a warmer environment, it's a good idea to split the brisket. That way you can open the whole carcass up and get it to cool down quickly. Okay, so we've done up to the bottom of the brisket. We're now going to just go down the back here and finish off down the back. There's that pizzle. We're just going to work a little bit of that. Like so. That's all ready to come out. Okay, so our next step is getting our hands dirty and getting up inside and pulling the whole lot out. The puck should come out, which is your heart, your liver, and your lungs. It should all come out um, after we get rid of the gut cavity. There's just another section of membrane inside here. Sometimes you need to cut that out if the animal's an older animal, it gets a bit difficult to rip. So we shall pull the guts out. So here we go. Sleeves are rolled up because <laughs> this is where it can get a bit messy. You should be able to reach in. Just take your time to start with until you make sure you've got the right bit that we need. There we go, look at that. There's your bowel with your anus, all cable tied off. As you can see, nice and clean. Nothing there to spoil the meat at all. Okay. So once all that's separated, just gradually work your way along. It's very bloated, this deer now. Okay, there we've got a nice clean kidney that I've just pulled out. And you can see if there's anything to worry about, there's usually spots on the inside of the membrane of the kidney. As you can see there, this is nice and clean. So if you like kidneys, hang on to that bit. Good tip to keep them from dropping in the dirt is to just pop them back inside the cavity. And you'll probably find the other one should be just close by. It. There's the other one. Again, looks excellent. Just pop that one back next to the other one down here. So we're just going to keep moving up. And we should shortly find the spot where Corey hit the animal through the lungs. I'm just going to grab the kidneys out and pop them over here on the top. I'm going to keep the liver too because we don't want to waste anything. That liver is beautiful and clean as well. So once you've got it all separated up like this, get your hand right up inside. <laughs> Excuse me, and get hold of the uh, esophagus. And you'll feel it because it feels the same as the outside. Just stop it from dropping in the dirt. Pull it through. You find you should be able to pull it. Before things go well, pull it through. Again, there we go. As you can see, it, that's its windpipe. It's all bloated from the gases in its stomach. No gut, no discharge, no food. Everything inside that carcass now should be excellent. Okay, well, we're going to reach back inside now, grab hold of the heart. Now, the animal's been shot through the lungs, so they might not come out in one piece. There you go, there's the lungs. Absolutely destroyed. Where you saw that bullet hole, it's taken out the top of the lungs because there's the heart which sits below them and there's the two lungs that the bullet's destroyed. Okay, so now we're just going to grab the knife which just fell off, make sure it's clean and separate the heart from the lungs. So we're just going to work around the bottom of the heart. Uh, 
and there we go so now we should be finished some coagulated blood there okay so that's been in the chest cavity it's all coagulated out of the lungs the rest of this should just come out there we go quite a lot of coagulated blood in the chest cavity when you shoot them through the lungs it's a good idea now that you get rid of your gut get it right out of the road just get rid of that really good idea just to drain out all this blood that's left in the chest cavity now as you can see there's quite a lot okay so that's our animal basically field dressed you can cut the head off remove the hocks do all those sorts of things if you want to it's not a bad idea to leave the animal like this now for transportation because leaving the skin on does protect it from any contaminants and keeps it clean um, like i mentioned earlier there's a lot of blood left in the chest cavity that'll normally drain out when you hang the animal it's a good idea to get rid of that um, our gut sitting over here behind us look one of the things with shooting on private property and stuff is you know you, you don't necessarily want to leave guts and bits of dead animal laying around a paddock so it's a good idea just dig a quick hole bury the gut no problems everything's out of sight out of mind easy as that so we'll get this drained and packed up in the esky and head home